Hello everyone and welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Terra and Tats. And uh, today, yeah, I'm going to do a fun movie. And um, it gave me an idea for my first, um, for my first uh, uh, random week for September. So Rob, uh, Rob, if you're watching this, you know, since I'm doing today, I'm going to be reviewing Munster Go Home. May as well. Why not for my first week of September, go ahead and do Munster's Revenge. Why not go ahead? You know, if you can't, go ahead and put me down for that one. So anyway, so today, yeah, we're going to, um, because we got the Rob Zombie movie coming, and, you know, uh, I already called dibs on that one. I'm going to do that as my first random for um, October. So may as well go ahead and do this one and, you know, do the others while I'm at it. So anyway, so this one is from 1966, and you have most of your original cast, except for uh, Marilyn. They ended up, they... Uh, uh, sadly, they took out Pat Priest because they felt like she was too old to play the role. It's like, I don't think anybody would have cared. I mean, you know, she was Marilyn. I mean, at first, you know, there was Beverly Randolph, then there was Pat Priest, and this movie, uh, she's played by Debbie Watson. And um, it's like, she does okay. She does a fine job as Marilyn, you know, and stuff, but just kind of like, yeah, you do kind of miss Pat Priest. Even though, you know, personally, like, this is just all my own personal preference. Just, I kind of always prefer Beverly Randolph. I don't know why, but just, you know, I mean, nothing against Pat Priest. I mean, Pat Priest is nothing to spit at, trust me. But, uh, I don't know, just, you know, when it came to Marilyn, kind of like, I don't know, just, uh, you know, Beverly Randolph was kind of always my favorite Marilyn. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is the movie. The movie came out in 1966, and uh, this was meant to... This was filmed, like, right after the ending of the show. So what they wanted to do was they wanted to make this movie, get it out there so that, you know, the idea is hopefully that it would drum up enough interest that it would keep the show in circulation. And, you know, pretty much it worked, I guess. I mean, obviously, I mean, the Munsters have been around. We're still talking about it today. You know, they've tried rebooting it a bunch of times. Now you have, you know, Rob Zombie's movies coming and everything else. So anyway, so... Um, yeah, and uh, the story, it's its pretty easy to follow. It's pretty fun. It, it is a family film. So, you know, if you're sitting here thinking, like, is, it, is there going to be blood and gore and guts and stuff? No. Okay, I mean, obviously, it's a family movie. It's based off of a family, you know, TV sitcom. And the movie feels very much like a sitcom. It really does feel like you're watching a 90-minute, you know, like, leave it to Beaver almost. But anyway, so... Uh, the story starts off that, you know, Herman comes home from, you know, a long, hard day at the funeral parlor. And Lily and Eddie and Marilyn and Grandpa, they're all waiting for him. And it turns out that, you know, Herman got a, you know, he got a, uh, a letter saying that, uh, that uh, Kavanaugh Munster had passed away. And it was left in the will to Herman that he would become Lord Munster in England. So, you know, they decide that they want to take a trip over there. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, go see England, visit their, you know, English relatives and things like this. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, my God. I think James could definitely back me up on this one. This has probably got to be the most un-British British movie I've ever seen in my life. You know, I mean, I granted, I mean, I don't live in the UK or anything like that. But like I said, James does. I'm sure he could back me up. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, hardly any... It's supposed to take place in England, and hardly a very. There's maybe like a couple of actors in the whole movie that speak with a British accent. You only maybe have like a couple of real British actors in the movie, and everybody else, you know, speaks like with just regular American accents and stuff like this. And then you know, like whenever they're driving a car or something like that, you know, they drive on the side of the road that people in America drive on. You know, the right hand side, and you know, the. Uh, you know, the uh, steering wheel is always on the on the left hand side of the car. Where you know, over there in the UK, the steering wheel's on the right. You know, so so this has to be the most un-British British movie I think I've ever seen. But you know, still, you know, it. I think you're not really supposed to be paying too much attention to that. You know, you're supposed to just be having fun with it and fun with the monsters and stuff like that. So anyway, so they decide to take a trip over to England. So they go on a boat, and most of the time, Herman is you know, seasick, so they're kind of dealing with that. And at one point, Grandpa accidentally transforms himself into a wolf. He was going to give Herman, um, you know, like seasick pills, but, you know, Herman's like, well, I'll do it if you do it. 
You know, so he takes the pill himself, and they turns out he mixed it up and turns it. You know, like if you watch the monster, you know, Grandpa's always screwing up his his um, his experiments and stuff like that. You know, he's always like giving the wrong pills or or something like that. And he does it again. And he turns himself into a wolf, so they put him in quarantine. And so Herman has to go get him out. So anyway, they you know, as they approach England, um, the family the relatives of the Munsters, it turns out that they're very horrible, kind of very nefarious people. And you have uh, Aunt Effigy. It's Aunt, yeah, it's Aunt Effigy. And then uh, you have uh, Cousin Freddy and uh, Cousin Grace. Now, Cousin Freddy is played by Terry Thomas. And, uh, you know, this man's been in a lot of, you know, he's been in a lot of movies, a lot of British films, a lot of British television, things like this. And the one thing I'm always going to remember him from, though, is I'm always going to remember him as, you know, the Mr. Neat guy in uh, Vault of Horror. You know, the episode where, you know, the woman marries the guy and he's like, he's always like such a neat freak that is that it ends up driving her insane. You know, it's like, oh, can't you do anything neatly? Can't you? Can't you do anything neatly? You know, and all that stuff. And so it turns out that Freddy, you know, at the moment has the title of Lord Munster. And he's about to lose that title because, you know, in the will, Herman is going to become Lord Munster. So they don't want Herman to get the manor. They don't want him to get the title of Lord Munster. So, you know, the three of them decide they want to start, you know, planning, uh, planning, hatch a plot to kill him. And so, you know, uh, so when they get there, you know, they're trying all these different things. You know, at first they tried these, these scare tactics to try to get them out of the you know, get them out of the manor, try to scare them off, but of course, they're the monsters. So, you know, you try to, you know, you, like, you run around, you know, like, you know, jangling chains, running around with sheets, trying to scare them, and it's not going to work. They're the monsters, you know, so of course, they're happy with it. And so, in the meanwhile, you have uh, Marilyn, uh, meet a young man by the name of Roger, and, uh, you know, she starts to fall in love with him, and Roger actually is played by uh, Robert Pine. Now, Robert Pine, who, you know, What's this movie? I don't know. Maybe you may not agree with me, but in this movie, to me, he kind of looks like a young Carrie Elways, or at least a middle-aged Carrie. What? To me, I don't know. Just to me, he has that kind of Carrie Elways look to him. At least that's what I think. And so they start falling in love and everything else. But then it turns out that um, that uh, Roger is part of the Moresby family. It turns out the Moresby family has kind of this kind of Hatfield McCoy kind of you know uh, hatred towards the Munsters. And so they've always been kind of at odds with each other and stuff like this. So it definitely puts a rift in Marilyn and Roger's relationship. So uh, then, uh, and it turns out Roger's father uh, is actually played by Bernard Fox. Now, if you don't, Bernard Fox is one of those British character actors. Like, you've seen him and you know, like, you take one look at this guy for a second. You know you've seen him in something, you know. And to me, the one thing, I, I know I've seen him in lots of movies and television, but the one thing I always remember him from is the movie The Private Eyes. If you ever saw the movie The Private Eyes with Tim Conway and Don Knotts, that movie is awesome. If you haven't ever seen it, check it out. It's very funny. It's very kind of like, it's it's very, um, like, that's a movie, like, honestly, you could review for this channel and everything. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't know. Maybe, hey, Rob, maybe I should go ahead and put that as my second random for you know, September. So, I don't know. We'll talk about that. Anyway, so that's the movie I always remember him from is The Private Eyes with, you know, Tim Conway and Don Knotts. So, it turns out that, you know, yes, they have this feud and everything going on. So, what ends up, you know, and they have this, uh, they have this auto race that they have like every year. And, you know, usually it's always between, you know, it's always been neck and neck between the Moresby's and the Munsters and everything else. And so, uh, they dis so uh, and effigy and cousin Grace and cousin cousin Freddie, they decide that they want to hatch this plan, to uh, you know, have Herman ru you know drive in the race, and they want to have, you know, uh, this character who's kind of like a like a paid assassin called, you know, the Griffin. They want to pay pay this character to come along and you know figure out a way to, you know, make Herman have an accident so he dies and then they can keep, they can keep the manor, they can keep, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, they, he can keep the title of Lord Munster and everything else. And as the story goes on, uh, both um, 
you know, Herman and Grandpa, they kind of have this little side quest where they find out that, you know, Cousin Freddie and their family, you know, they're, uh, they're part of the Munster family. They're, you know, uh, you know, laundering money and things like that. Well, not laundering money. They're, um, uh, what's the word? Oh, uh, God. Counterfeiting money. Jeez, I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, so my brain's a little fried at the moment, but... So they're counterfeiting money and stuff, and they have these two guys that usually come along and pick up, you know, the money and take it off and, you know, do whatever with it. And one of the guys is actually played by Richard Dawson, who, you know, you remember used to be the host of Family Feud. Um, he was the bad guy and, you know, the running man with all Schwarzenegger, you know, did movie and television appearances throughout the years and everything. So, so uh, you know, Lena t so now you got Herman, he's going to get into the race. And this is, uh, yeah, I think this is where they built the Dragula. And, you know, so Herman gets into the race. And then it's up to uh, Lily and, and Grandpa to, you know, they, you know, they find out about the plot to kill Herman. So the two of them have to, you know, do everything they can to stop Herman from being killed. And so, and it's, there's a one bad side, though, to this movie being in high definition, though. This is the Screen Factory Blu-ray. There is a downside to this movie being in high definition because whenever you see, like, um, you know, Lily or Grandpa, like, they're riding a motorcycle or they're riding a horse, and it's not them shot against, like, a backdrop, you know, but you see Lily and, and Grandpa and horses, you can, it's so easy to see that it's, you know, that it's, like, stunt doubles doing the riding, you know, riding the motorcycle, riding the horses and stuff. It's very obvious. And, um, but, uh, overall, uh, the movie, it's a lot of fun. If you're a Munsters fan, you're going to love this movie. It's, it's just a good fun 90 minutes. If you like the show, you're going to love this. Um, the movie is in color, but you know, Hey, you know, for, you know, for, you know, shits and giggles. Hey man, why not have fun? You know, get on your TV, turn off the color, put, watch it in black and white. It'll fit really well in with the TV show as well. So, you know, it just, it definitely feels like. Watching it in black and white, it feels very much like a very natural extension of, you know, the um, the TV show. And uh, so, yeah, so I would definitely say check it out. If you're a Munsters fan, if you haven't seen Munster Go Home, and if you actually are interested in seeing the original Munsters in, with the exception of Maryland, but uh, if you are interested in seeing, you know, the Munsters in a color movie, you know, here you go. You know, this is, you know, one you can check out. And uh, this is an awesome uh, addition from Screen Factory. I definitely recommend it. There's quite a few bonus features on here. And um, one of the bonus features on here that uh, I think, you know, for anybody who might be on the fence of, um, you know, Rob Zombie's, you know, Munsters movie that's coming up, I would definitely say get this movie and watch it with Rob Zombie's commentary. It's him, Justin Beam, and Butch Patrick on there. And you could tell, like, Rob Zombie is like, he's, he's working you know, you tell, like, he's getting his ideas and stuff, getting ready to make this movie and all this kind of stuff. Like, he is talking, like, you know, he kind of dominates a lot of the audio commentaries, like, between him and Butch Patrick. But, um, like, you could tell, like, you watch this with the commentary. Rob is definitely picking Butch's brains and, you know, like, trying to get every little detail of information that he can get and talking about how much, you know, he really, you know, loved the show and how much it meant to him and, you know, how you can't just try to duplicate it and everything else. You know, you need to do something different. So maybe if you're on the fence about um, Rob's movie that's coming up, maybe, you know, watch the commentary on here and maybe it might kind of set your mind at rest about, you know, his movie that's coming up and maybe it might make you feel a little bit better. Or maybe not. Who knows? But uh, so, yeah. So I would definitely say Munster Go Home. Definitely check it out. If you love the Munsters, I do. I love the Munsters. All the time. Used to watch the Munsters and the Adams Family as a kid. So, so, so happy to, you know, to talk about this. And I am looking forward to Rob's movie. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I can tell you right now, it's not going to, you know, like take away my love for this. I mean, you know, um, you know, your cast is always perfect, you know. Fred Wynn, Yvonne DiCarlo, Al Lewis, Butch Patrick, you know, always perfect, you know, and just such a great movie. So I would definitely say, yeah. So Monster Go Home, definitely check it out. So that's it, everybody. And, uh, you know, if uh, you see this video, you know, uh, if you like the video, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, please go and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. 
we have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. I'm the Saturday reviewer. We have a lot of great guys. Everybody's doing great stuff. Um, we have more fun theme weeks coming up and everything else. You know, so, yeah. So, everybody, check us out. Have a good night, and uh, I'll see you guys next week.